Good morning, my name is Josh from Cyclone's Oz and here's your detailed weather forecast update for Thursday the 24th of July 2025. Plenty to talk about today as well. Strong storms moving through the southwest of Western Australia. We've got some cold weather as well over in the southeast of the state and a very significant low pressure system expected to develop this weekend which is going to have impacts as far reaching as northern Queensland. All the details on these weather systems plus more coming up in today's weather forecast update and if you are brand new to the channel please do consider subscribing but let's get stuck straight into things this morning just with a brief update on the rainfall that has fallen over the last 24 hours across different parts of the nation. Starting things off with the southwest, as you can see that strong weather system moving through southwest and western Australia over the last uh, 12 hours and it has brought some very significant rainfall accumulations, especially through parts of the Perth metro area, especially just towards the south of Perth. Kings Park has picked up 75 millimetres overnight. My personal weather station has picked up 68 millimetres of rainfall overnight. I'm not too far south of Perth myself and multiple other observations in the southern suburbs of Perth, especially around Janicott and Fremantle, have picked up between 40 to 60 millimetres of rainfall. The south Perth also looking at about 65 millimetres in the rain gauge. There's still some more heavy showers moving through into the Perth metro area this morning and some good showers as well moving through ball piling in down on the south coast. So plenty more rainfall is still expected throughout the remainder of this morning and potentially into early this afternoon. However, showers will continue to clear as we get later on into today. Showers are also beginning to clear across interior parts of the weird and that's expected to lead to a very, very cold day. Temperatures are not expected to rise above 10 degrees from multiple locations, especially into the southern reaches of the weird and into the southwest corners and the south coast coastal regions as well. In fact, six or seven degrees is going to be the maximum for some of these places today. It is going to be freezing. A big cloud band as well moving through interior parts of Western Australia. That's dragging in a bit of moisture as well. In fact, Port Hedland has seen 10 millimetres overnight. Some good rainfall accumulations as well here and there through the Gascoyne and even into the Pilbara region as well. In fact, the Kimberley is the only place that hasn't actually received any rainfall from this weather system here so far. Uh, rainfall is also moving in towards South Australia's uh, uh, western half as well. And we're expected that to pick up throughout the remainder of today. I'll get to that in just a few minutes as well. Into the eastern parts of Australia, not only is it a very cold morning across the east under the influence of that high pressure system, Goldburn at, uh, or Captain's Flat actually at minus 6 degrees this morning, through about minus 5 and a couple of other temperature observations down into the minus 3 or minus 4 degrees mark. Uh, Roma sitting at, well, it was minus 2 degrees earlier this morning, they're now starting to warm up as the sun uh, continues to rise. We did have some showers and rainfall move through into the southeast corners of Queensland as well last night, with some stronger thunderstorms moving through there. Uh, definitely some of the strongest storms that we've seen for the month of July, but nothing in the way of severe thunderstorms and I think it was about 45 millimetres at Cape Byron, just towards the south of the Queensland New South Wales border, with falls between 30 to 40 millimetres through the Brisbane metro area. Rainfall accumulations are a little bit lighter the further north uh, you got, and some good rainfall accumulations as well up around Rockhampton, where they had about 30 millimetres in the last 48 hours, and, and even some rainfall making it north of Townsville up in towards Cairns and the Cassowary Coast as well, and the showers there are expected to continue throughout the remainder of today. So all in all, plenty of rainfall to, to go around over the last 24 hours, and there is going to be heaps more of it as well if we take a look at the forecast modelling here. So like I said, showers continuing for the southwest of Western Australia. Uh, we're expecting this low pressure system here to be dragged across the West Australian coastline and it's going to ride high into the Great Australian Bight through tonight and into tomorrow morning. This is the weather system that we've been talking about for the last couple of days, that large weather system that's also going to pack a punch for South Australia, New South Wales, Victoria, the Capital Territory, Tasmania and also parts of Queensland. The low pressure system is expected to get itself out of the Great Australian Bight throughout the remainder of tonight into early tomorrow morning where it will then begin to intensify the pressure will continue to drop and we're expecting the storm to then trace along the South Australian and the Victorian coastline through Friday night into Saturday morning before Sunday afternoon moving south of the uh, south of the Victorian coastline and then down through Sunday and Monday tracking parallel to the Tasmanian coastline. That's the, the, the general track of this weather system that we're expecting but if we zoom out you can see impacts are going to be as far reaching as central and even northern Queensland with the severe thunderstorm outbreak expected tomorrow night. There is so much to be talking about here so I'm going to do my best to break it down for you state by state, region by region in the next couple of minutes. So stick with me for Queensland. I'll be around, uh, I'll get up there in about five or six minutes time. But first off with the southeast of Australia, we're expecting this low pressure system here to really do its intensification work through tonight and into early tomorrow morning. Strong winds are anticipated, especially on the northern and the western side of the system here. So as this low pressure system moves through, it'll be drawing up a nice uh, Antarctic air pool on the back side of the system, which is going to contribute to those cold temperatures we're expecting over in Western Australia tomorrow night and Saturday night. Uh, but it also means that we're going to be seeing some strong winds immediately towards the west of the low pressure system. And then 
then they'll move into the northern side of the system as well through South Australia. Associated with that rainfall, it's going to continue to build from tonight for the western half of the state into early tomorrow morning for the central parts and then into early tomorrow afternoon for the eastern half of South Australia. We're not expecting anything too serious in the way of rainfall. It will be a solid rain band moving through the entirety of the state. And this will extend north into the southern reaches of the Northern Territory. In fact, as far north as Balgo Hill and a line between Balgo Hill across towards Tennant Creek, so Docker River, Alice Springs, Ayers Rock, Yallara, Curtin Springs, those locations, all expecting some rainfall uh, over the next 24 hours as a result of this weather system here. Before this low pressure system's uh, main frontal band continues to move over towards Queensland and New South Wales by Friday mid-afternoon and then into Friday uh, evening deeper into New South Wales and Queensland. The low pressure system here will then, uh, as it gets closer to the coastline, funnel in those heavy showers and damaging winds behind this system here. That will pipe up along the Air Peninsula from about uh, midday onwards for Friday and reach a, severe, a peak in severity by around Friday evening into early Saturday morning. Showers will continue along the South Australian coastline into Saturday morning, but we're expecting conditions overall to ease for this, uh, much of the South Australian coastline as a low pressure system tracks towards the south coast of Victoria. And we're looking at this uh, low pressure system here, pulling away from the uh, Australian mainland, then down towards Tasmania through Saturday night and taking the severe weather impacts with it. But that's not going to be before some decent rainfall accumulations as well can be expected across Victoria, especially through some of the hills across the central regions of the state and then into the Victorian Alps as well. And then, of course, into the New South Wales high country, we're also expecting some good rainfall accumulations, tending to snowfall at a certain altitude. Tasmania is not one to be forgetting about either. We're expecting strong northeasterly winds tending to easterlies at times through Saturday to bring heavy rainfall to parts of the east coast of Tasmania. We'll start on the north coast and then track down through the east coast through Saturday morning and into early Saturday afternoon. And falls between 10 to 25 millimetres can be expected with isolated totals up to 75 millimetres depending on how heavy the rainfall does get for some of these uh, locations through Saturday and into early Sunday morning. Low pressure system then tracking parallel to the Tasmanian coastline moving south of Tasmania through Sunday night into Monday morning, anticipating south into the Tasman Sea. Showers will still continue across much of southeastern Australia with another much weaker low pressure system expected to move up into the Great Australian Bight and we're just expecting showery stuff to continue for Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday and beyond that and just in fact for the remainder of July before conditions slowly begin to ease off for the first week of August and we get a return to some more normal winter weather systems moving through. Now, there are a lot of moving parts of this weather forecast here. Now, if I was giving a detailed forecast for each location, this forecast video would eventually be an hour or two long. So I'm going to break it down for you in a bit more of a simple uh, a kind of run through here for the rainfall. We're expecting some decent rainfall accumulations along the South Australian coastline, especially towards the west of Port Lincoln. Rainfall accumulations between 40 to 80 millimetres are a possibility. Most falls will be between that kind of 30 to 40 millimetre mark, but there are some isolated risk of some heavier rainfall accumulations, especially towards the immediate west of Sejuna. Good rainfall accumulations pushing up around 25 or even 30 or 40 millimetres are expected further north through South Australia as well. Cooper PD looking at at least 25 millimetres of rainfall coming through in the next 36 hours or so and even some good rainfall making it out towards Lake Eyre about 15 millimetres or so. This rainfall here is not going to contribute in any meaningful or measurable capacity to a fill of Lake Eyre so we're not expecting an increase in water levels. As a result of this rainfall it's just not going to happen. The Flinders Ranges will also get some decent rainfall accumulations. Falls can be as high as 50 millimetres not to mention the damaging wind threat that will unfold there. Adelaide looking at about 50 millimetres as well. Central parts of Victoria falls between 25 to 50 millimetres are expected with isolated higher falls to 60 or 70 millimetres of possibility across the higher elevations through Victoria. Melbourne looking at about 25 to 30 millimetres of rainfall. Higher accumulations are also expected on the southwest coast around Warrnambool where rainfall accumulations could be again up around that 50 millimetre mark with more showers coming through on Saturday, Sunday and Monday. The north coast of Tasmania looking at between 30 to 50 millimetres as well. The east coast of Tasmania, like I said, between 25 to 75 millimetres is a possibility. And interestingly enough, the southwest wilderness region, which normally picks up the majority of the rainfall uh, from winter storm systems, is actually the driest spot in Tasmania over the next four or five days. Rainfall is also expected to move in towards New South Wales as well. Widespread falls between 25 uh, or around 25 millimetres are expected over the next 48 hours, especially between Friday morning and Friday afternoon. Uh, higher rainfall accumulations expected into the southeast corner of the state around uh, the mountainous areas as well. So we're talking about Cabramara and then across towards uh, the Snowy Mountain foothills and then up towards Canberra. Falls could be up around that 60 or 70 millimetre mark, falling a snowfall uh, above a certain elevation, which is most likely to be around that 1200 to 1300 metre mark with some blizzard conditions expected on Sunday and Sunday 
Sunday as well, associated with the very strong winds that are going to be coming through from this weather system. We could be looking at snowfall accumulations between 20 to 40 centimetres over this next five day forecast period. Snow is also expected in a light dusting capacity outside of Sydney, up around Bathurst and Lithgow. Snowfall accumulations there will be very light and probably not settling, but again, above 1200 metres. Snow is also our possibility up there. Tasmania isn't expecting anything too much in the way of snowfall at this point in time, and no other snowfall is, or no other major snowfall accumulations can be noted across Victoria or Tasmania either, or even further up in towards New South Wales. I'm not seeing anything too crazy at this point in time. Winds are definitely going to be a bit of a problem from this weather system here. We're definitely expecting some strong winds as a result of this storm system that's going to come through, especially onto the backside of this weather system here uh, through the South Australian coastline. We'll be talking about wind gusts between 90 to 110 kilometres an hour and slightly a little bit, likely a little bit stronger across some of the more exposed locations on the Nullarbor. Winds are also expected to be quite strong into the Flinders Ranges with peak gusts north of Adelaide expected to be up around that 110 kilometre an hour mark as well. Winds will be weaker as you get towards the east of Adelaide and in fact between Adelaide down towards Melbourne there's no damaging winds expected from this weather system except for on the higher elevations outside of Melbourne and then into the Victorian Alps. Winds are also expected to not be too much of a problem for Tasmania apart from some stronger wind gusts coming through on the east coast. So even though the system remains extremely large and a very powerful extratropical cyclone in terms of intensity, uh, it, it isn't going to be too severe. It's definitely got a little bit more uh, in terms of appearance as opposed, uh, as opposed to expected impacts. It's more uh, looks than it is power at this point in time. But it is going to uh, fire up some powerful thunderstorms, especially in towards the central parts of Queensland ahead of this storm's cold front moving through. And it really is going to be a perfect storm set up for some significant severe thunderstorms, even in uh, the later parts of July across the interior parts of Queensland. As you know, uh, with an approaching cold front, we do get that line of thunderstorms developing when it does move through Queensland. We had them a couple of weeks ago and we're expecting them again. It's when that warm moist air that's going to be dragged down from the northwest on the leading edge of this weather system meets the cold dry air coming in behind this weather system here that's moved through the desert, creating a perfect environment for thunderstorms thunderstorms to develop and we are expecting a good line of thunderstorms to develop from Friday evening in towards Friday night through interior parts of Queensland with powerful thunderstorms expected for locations such as Adavale, Quilpie, Yarraka, Thungaminda, Kanamala, Wyandra, Charleville, Orgathella, Tambo, Longreach and up towards Winton as well. These are some significant thunderstorms and the risk is definitely there for some significant severe ones with small hailstones pretending to medium or even large sized hailstones, heavy rainfall and damaging and locally destructive winds. The severe thunderstorm risk is definitely going to be there Friday uh, night and into early Sunday morning before these thunderstorms upscale dramatically into a large rainfall band slash squall line moving through Queensland through Sunday and then into the southeast corner of the state and into the central regions of Queensland Saturday night and into early Sunday morning, clearing through Sunday afternoon from Queensland. A few showers still expected here and there through Sunday and into early Monday morning, but for the most part, rainfall clearing through early Sunday morning. There will be some good rainfall accumulations uh, where these thunderstorms do develop. In fact, we could be looking at falls between 50 to 80 millimetres under the right thunderstorms here. There, are, there will be some heavy falls embedded in these thunderstorms However, because it is going to be coming through from thunderstorms, rainfall accumulations will be very few and far between, and these thunderstorms, especially in their formative stages when they are going to be at their most severe, will be very isolated. If you are uh, thinking about where the best chances of seeing thunderstorms and significant lightning displays are going to be, it's going to be for locations such as Longreach, Tambo, Orgathella, and Charleville. It's going to be once these systems do upscale into that squall line, but not too late in the night when these systems are then going to begin collapsing in on themselves. So it is a little bit of a difficult forecast at this point in time, because once these thunderstorms are much further out into the the southwest of the state. They will, they will be a lot fewer and further between, but they will be a lot stronger. And then they will weaken and upscale in size and um, kind of how dramatic they eventually become and then move through locations such as Longreach, Tambo, Orgathella and Charleville by around eight or nine o'clock tomorrow afternoon uh, or tomorrow night, I should say. Nine o'clock is definitely classed as night time. But yeah, some significant severe thunderstorms are expected. Some out of season significant severe thunderstorms are expected and they definitely could pack a punch some of these storms here that are going to be moving through Queensland. So if you are looking out for severe thunderstorms, they're definitely going to be a bit of a risk uh, through tomorrow night and definitely something to be keeping in the back of your head at this point in time. Significant severe thunderstorms that we see in say September or October aren't expected but definitely in the formative stages out in the southwest of the state. These storms will pack a punch. They will be their quintessential th uh, summer thunderstorms in the middle of winter so definitely unusual. Definitely got a little bit a bit of punch to them and could catch a few people off guard. So severe thunderstorms expected across this part of Queensland. Definitely something to keep in the back of your head at this point in time. After this active period blows through later on into the forecast period into the first week of August, we're not looking at anything too crazy on the long range forecast modeling at this point in time. It'll just be quintessential low pressure systems moving through the southwest of the state, uh, southwest of the nation rather, and then into the southeast once again. But I am now looking at the possibility as we enter into a bit of a dry period, some kind of low pressure system moving through down into the Tasman Sea or south of the Coral Sea and then into the Tasman Sea, which could fire up a few showers and maybe even a rainfall event or two over into the east coast of New South Wales into the first week of August. 
it will definitely be interesting to see what happens uh, on the forecast modeling here. But it definitely looks like with the weakening of the southern annual load and the weather system is being able to be pushed further south, we will see a low pressure system move south into the Tasman Sea, and that could create some problems for the east. Uh, the eastern states of Australia in terms of rainfall for New South Wales or even potentially southeast Queensland. That's just my hunch here for the first or the second week of August. We are expecting a bit of a calmer period across the southeast of Australia winter weather-wise and generally speaking when we do enter in one of those calmer periods we do get the possibility raised of a few showers and storms moving through across the eastern coast. That could uh, create some rainfall problems here and there. But that's looking a lot further long range and I'll get to the long range forecast in a future forecast update. Apart from that, that's going to have to do it for today's forecast update. We've been very detailed across, uh, especially the southeast of the nation as well. So if you have found this uh, information informative or enjoyable, and preferably both, then please do consider subscribing as well and leave a like on the video while you're at it. A special shout out, of course, goes out to the channel sponsors. Their names are on screen right now. And again, I could not only shout out themselves, of course, their support is also much appreciated. Uh, and if you two want to get in there mentioned at this part of the forecast update, then please do click the join button down below. It's a small price and it's the best way to find actually support the Cyclone Tolls channel and again I thank everybody uh, for supporting the Cyclone Tolls channel in that way but that is going to be all for me today and I'll catch you on the next storm. Goodbye.